Hi, seems like I'll be talking about weight painting in Blender again. This time we'll be talking about painting through the mesh in weight paint mode, which can be very useful. This was very easy to do in older versions of Blender, for example in Blender 2.79, but many people consider this broken in more recent versions of Blender. I also thought that this feature was broken, but it does work. It's just not obvious how to set it up. If you haven't watched my previous videos on weight painting, I'll put a link to the playlist in the description. You may also enjoy my last video in which I showed a couple of interface changes in weight paint mode in Blender 2.91 and 9.2. The weight paint area of Blender seems to be very volatile. There seem to be a lot of changes being made. So just in case, I checked Blender 2.83 LTS, which many people are still using. I checked uh, the current stable version, which is 2.91. I checked the 2.92 beta and even 2.3 alpha. I checked all of them to make sure that there aren't any interface changes. And fortunately there weren't any. So in this video I'll be working in Blender 2.92 beta because it will become stable very very soon and also it has the fixed undo behavior. You can watch my previous video about that. But the settings I'm going to show you should be the same in all versions of Blender, at least since version 2.83. If you're using an even earlier version, you most likely should update to a more recent version. But let's get to the problem. Here I have a model and an armature. I'm going to quickly parent this model to the armature with empty groups. You can of course go for automatic weights, but in this case I want my model to become an empty canvas on which I can paint and demonstrate. So I'll choose empty groups. Then as always I'm going to select the armature, shift select the character and go to weight paint mode. And then I can control click any of the uh, deforming bones and that will activate the vertex group that belongs to that bone. So I'm going to control click th this shin bone for example. And now, while painting weights, you may want to paint not only on the side of the mesh that is facing you, but also on the geometry that is on the other side, on the opposite side. For example, in this shin area, I may want to paint the whole leg front and back with one click, instead of painting the front and then orbiting around the leg and then painting the back. But with the default Blender settings, if you try to paint here, you'll only be painting on one side, on the front side. One logical idea that you may have is to switch to wireframe mode, which will show the back uh, faces of the model. If I can see the back faces, then maybe I can paint on them. Makes sense, but unfortunately it doesn't work. Then if you look at the options under N panel, brush settings advanced, you'll see an option that says front faces only. And that looks very promising. It sounds like if I untick this option, then I should be able to paint on the backside of the mesh. But if I try it, again, the backside is not affected. So I think this is the moment when most people, me included, assume that something is wrong, something is broken, and you simply can't paint through the mesh. But if you expand the fall off options, you'll see the fall off shape option. And by default, it is set to sphere. If you switch it to project it and try to paint now, that finally allows us to paint through the mesh. Yay. So these are the main options that you need to set. Front faces only should be off and fall off shape should be set to project it. But there is one more option that can mess things up and that is this uh, front face fall off option right here. First I'm going to undo all of the painting that I did so far and because I'm using Blender 2.92 none of my settings will be reset, that is so nice. So let's test this again. I have front faces off and projected on and I'm going to paint and I'll be painting on both sides of the mesh. Let's undo and now I'm going to turn on front face fall off and paint again. And that again disables the ability to paint on the backside of the mesh. When you enable this option, front face fall off, Blender will only paint on the faces that are connected to the area where you click at an angle that is up to the value that you set here under angle. 
So in this case, 80 degrees. Did that make any sense? I don't know. And honestly, to me, this is one of these options that are just annoyingly and pointlessly precise. I'm sure someone somewhere really likes this option for some reason, but I personally will always keep it off. And if you want to paint through the mesh, turn it off. That's all I have to say about that. By the way, I found the solution to this problem on Blender Stack Exchange. If you don't know about Stack Exchange, you're missing out. There is something about this platform that just promotes good answers. So next time you have a Blender problem, go to Stack Exchange and either uh, perform a search or ask a question yourself. So that's it. If you need to paint through some meshes right now, please click like and subscribe and I'll talk to you soon. You could of course also share this with a friend so that they can also paint through some polygons. Oh, and if you've noticed any weird interface problems in Blender, let me know. I'm happy to make more videos like this one. Okay, now I can let you go. But if you have a few more minutes, I'm going to give you a semi-technical explanation of this fall-off shape option. And then I'm going to rumble about user interfaces, which I know nothing about. Okay, so about these uh, fall-off shape options, this is what I imagine happens with each option. If you have it set to sphere, then when I click in this area of the leg, my brush will be applied as a sphere with the same radius as the brush size. And it will have a full strength at the center of the sphere and then it will quickly fall off as we go towards the edge of the sphere. And so very little influence reaches the backside of this model. Technically, if your model is very, very thin, then you should be able to paint on the backside of it even with the sphere option. But I did test it and it didn't work. Whereas with projected, it always works. I think what happens with the projected option is that your brush becomes like an infinitely long uh, cylinder, like what I have here. So if I click here, then this influence will be projected all the way through the length of this uh, cylinder. So that is my semi-technical and probably a little bit wrong explanation of these options. I hope it made sense. And next I'm going to move on to my thoughts about user experience and user interface. As I said earlier, I am not a new UI expert or anything. I'm just sharing my thoughts and feel free to share yours in the comments. But why is it so confusing to paint through the mesh with the current settings? I think from a user standpoint, the desire to paint on the backside of the object is a single idea. I want to paint on the opposite side of the mesh. It's a simple and valid idea. So a good UI should also answer this idea with a single option. And Blender almost does this. If simply enabling or disabling the front faces only option did the trick, that would have been perfect. But we have to go to a separate part of the interface and tick another option that doesn't seem related. That is something that the average user or even an experienced user won't do naturally. If all of these options were grouped together, then maybe the average user could figure it out. But in the current state, it's just too much to ask from the user. One simple solution would be to have the projected option enabled by default. I would say that this behavior actually makes more sense anyway. Since the cursor is shown as a flat circle, I don't really imagine it as a sphere anyway. I know that creating a perfect user experience is not easy because Blender is so diverse. It can be used for many things. And so my ideal workflow is not your ideal workflow. I also know that this area of Blender, these options here, is being worked on. I can't remember where I heard this. I think it was in a recent Blender Today show, but you can expect more changes in this area. I understand that many people may be annoyed by these changes. I am kind of annoyed myself, especially since I have made a video about this and these interface changes make the information in my videos not quite right. But ultimately, I think these changes are for the better. My hope is that the Blender developers will try to figure a lot of these interface things until Blender 3.0.
if you didn't know, Blender version 3 is expected to be released in 2021, and hopefully the interface will stabilize a bit with this version. Uh, that's just my wish for the future. Anyway, I kind of feel that we need someone to keep us up to date with these small but important UI changes. We have plenty of people who cover the five cool features in Blender 2. Point whatever. What we don't have is a resource that shows us the one small UI change that will make you want to punch yourself in the face, or worse. So if you find any UI annoyances, let me know in the comments. Okay, thank you for staying until the end. Please click like and subscribe, ring the bell and so on, and talk to you soon.